Good evening, and welcome back to the Poe Museum. This might come as a total surprise to you, but we spent a lot of time talking about Edgar Allan Poe here. In particular, there's one subject that has captivated our viewership, the two or three out of you that are actually watching this, and it's Edgar Allan Poe's death. So once again, that will be the subject of tonight's installment of The Curator's Crypt. Recently, we posted a video about the last letter that Poe ever wrote. And this is important because in this particular letter, it's just a couple weeks before Poe's death, and he's writing to a poet in Philadelphia whose book he's going to edit. And after that, he's going to head up to New York City, pick up his aunt slash mother-in-law, Mariah Poe Clem, bring her back down here to Richmond, and she's going to live with Edgar and his new bride, Elmira Shelton. So he left Richmond, and then about five days later, he turns up semi-conscious, dressed in somebody else's clothes at a polling place in Baltimore. Why is he at a polling place? Why is he wearing somebody else's clothes? Well, the theory was that he was cooped. And this is a practice where political gangs would find somebody from out of town that nobody recognized, nobody to miss, and they'd get them drunk or they'd drug them, and they'd keep them cooped up until election day, and use them as repeat voters. They drag all the cooped up people to the polls. They'd either bribe or threaten the election judge on duty, and all the people would sign their excellent line to vote. They'd drag them all back, switch all their clothes, have them vote again in different clothes. Then drag them back, switch all their clothes, have them vote again. And they drag them from polling place to polling place as long as they kept them drunk enough that they pretty much do whatever the political gang told them to do. So this is a possible theory about what could have happened to Poe, and it starts to film those missing days from the time that Poe left Richmond until he's found in Baltimore. And based on this last letter that Poe wrote, he wasn't really supposed to be in Baltimore. He was really just there because he was taking a steamship from Norfolk, Virginia to Baltimore, where he was supposed to hop the next train to get to Philadelphia. And even if he missed that train, he could have just caught the next day's train. So why was he there for several days? What was he doing? Why does nobody seem to have seen him or bumped into him on the street? What exactly happened to him that caused him to stay there? And the cooping theory really fills in those blanks a little bit. And from there, he went to the hospital where he spent the last four days of his life delirious, in and out of consciousness, hallucinating, talking to shadows on the wall, not making any sense at all. And the doctors say he died of basically inflammation of the brain, congestion of the brain, phrenitis. There's a bunch of different terms they threw out, which basically mean they really didn't know what was wrong with him. There's something wrong with his brain. So cooping doesn't entirely explain Poe's death, but it does fill in some blanks. So after he posted the video about the last letter Poe ever wrote, one of our Patreon patrons, Levi, wrote to us his opinion on this. I think the cooping theory is the most plausible argument, but I think that other health issues that Poe was experiencing at the time also contributed. I think that if he was totally healthy at the time he was cooped, he probably would have survived the drugging, roughing up, and subsequent hospital stay. Then there's the curious case that happened earlier that year when Poe visited his friend John Sartain, paranoid that people were after him, he begged Sartain to shave his mustache and make him less recognizable. Sartain claimed that Poe was not himself and hallucinating. It's a bit odd that months later, Poe would be in a disguise, incoherent, but this time close to death. It makes me wonder if Poe had another mental break and that had anything to do with the circumstances that he was in when he was found. So what's Levi talking about? Well, roughly three months before Poe died, it was July of 1849, and he's passing through Philadelphia on his way from New York down to Richmond. It was middle of a cholera outbreak. The city was practically abandoned because people just fled the city to get away from the cholera. There were carts carrying coffins up and down the streets to mass graves. And it's the middle of a heat wave. And in the midst of all this, 
Poe shows up at the studio of John Sartain, who was a printer and a mezzotint engraver, pretty accomplished mezzotint engraver. He did this portrait of Poe. And he's also the editor and owner of Sartain's Union Magazine, which published Poe's poems, Annabelle Lee and the Belts. And about 40 years after the fact, this is the May 1889 issue of Lippincott's Magazine, Sartain published this article, Reminiscences of Edgar Allan Poe. And he describes that last visit of Poe to Philadelphia. And basically he says, Poe showed up pale and haggard, barely himself, kind of sickly looking. And he said that people were out to get him. They wanted to kill him. And Sartain says, why would anybody want to kill you? Get real here. And Poe says, it's for revenge. And Sartain says, revenge for what? He says, it's a woman thing. We don't know who this woman is. We don't know what he's talking about. But Sartain offered to take Poe into his studio, and he was not going to let Poe shave off his mustache. He wasn't going to let him have a razor anywhere near him. So he took some scissors, and he sort of trimmed Poe's mustache. And after that, Poe was sort of delirious. He's sort of out of it, paranoid. He thought he heard people talking about him on the train and wanted to kill him. And after a while, he said, I want to step out and get some fresh air. I want to walk down to the Schuylkill. So Sartain went with him just to look out for him. And they went to the Fairmount Waterworks. And there was a reservoir up where the Philadelphia Museum of Art is right now on the top of the hill. So they took this long staircase along the edge of the reservoir, and Sartain had to sort of stay between Poe and the edge to keep Poe from jumping into the water and killing himself. So Sartain was really worried about Poe. And then when they got up there, Poe was telling him all the strange things that happened. He said that he'd been arrested for public drunkenness. And when he was in prison, he saw this glowing figure rising up outside of his window. It was so bright that the bars cast shadows across the room. And then he said that he was taken to this big boiling cauldron and these men tried to force him to drink when he wouldn't drink the boiling oil because it would burn him. They got his mother-in-law and they chopped off her feet right in front of him just, just to punish him. And that didn't work. So they chopped her legs off of the knees and then he chopped them off again, all to torture him. And Sartain's describing this. He's trying to reassure Poe that this is all in your head. And a few days later, Sartain actually convinced him. And Poe was calm. And he said, oh, yeah, it was all hallucination. Never mind. It was, it was all in my mind. So after that, Poe was able to scrounge up the money and get his fare to get the rest of the way to Richmond. And even when he got to Richmond, he was still kind of sick, kind of out of it, and had to be cared for by doctors for the first few days when he arrived. So this sounds like some pretty wild, very detailed, elaborate descriptions. And it's tempting to think, well, this is Sartain writing 40 years after the fact. He's embellishing. Did this really happen? We don't have other instances from earlier when Poe's hallucinating. So why is all of a sudden he hallucinating here and now? It doesn't quite make sense. Except we do have a little bit of corroborating evidence. We have Poe's own letters he wrote at the time to Mariah Klim, and he does mention that he was arrested for drunkenness, and he says that I hadn't had a drop to drink. It was about Virginia, so he says it had to do with his recently deceased wife, and maybe the depression over that caused him to have some sort of episode that people mistook for drunkenness. He also doesn't go into tales about seeing her feet and knees chopped off, but Poe does say that he had this fearful premonition that something horrible had happened to Mariah Clem. He also mentions that he had, for the first time in his life, a hallucination. So maybe he's describing this same hallucination or something similar to what Sartain says that Poe was describing to him. And Poe gives his explanation. He repeatedly says he didn't have a drop to drink, but then he says the hallucination was a result of mania apatu, or madness from the drink, or drinking too much and hallucinating. So that's a term that's not really used today, but that's basically what Poe thought. Maybe he drank too much and that caused the hallucination. There's another account on top of that. This one's from 
not quite a decade after Poe died, John Reuben Thompson. We have the manuscript for it right here. He was the editor of the Southern Literary Messenger at the time of Poe's last visit to Richmond, and he kept a desk in the messenger office for Poe to, to use while he was in town, and Poe contributed essays and reviews to the magazines while he was here. He also gave Thompson a manuscript for the poem, Annabelle Lee. And after Poe died, Thompson cashed in. And a few years later, he wrote this lecture about Poe's character, his genius, and of course, his final days. Even back then, everybody wanted to know what killed Poe, what happened to him. And Thompson here, he also tells a story about Poe having hallucinations while in prison. And in his story, he's got this glowing figure that shows up and takes Poe up into the sky. And it sounds a lot like the glowing figure that Sartain said that Poe described to him. But Thompson doesn't think that Poe's death really had anything to do with this wild vision that he had or whatever caused him to hallucinate. Thompson's the one who proposed a theory that Poe had been cooped. So that's the theory that he has in his Poe death lecture. Of course, there's other Poe death lectures out there. Poe's attending physician John Moran is also traveling the country giving his lectures about Poe's death. And Sartain just sort of stays out of it. And it's 40 years later that he publishes his account of Poe's death. So you've got these competing ideas. But after this 1889 account by Sartain, people started to wonder, well, maybe this uh, hallucination was brought on by delirium tremens or alcohol withdrawal. So this is, if Poe were taking regular heavy doses of alcohol and suddenly he just stopped cold turkey, he might have some withdrawal symptoms, including hallucinations. And maybe that explains what was going on with him. And maybe that explains his death three months later. Maybe that was also delirium tremens. So people wrote to John Sartain to ask him, say, I saw that article you wrote for Lippincott's, and do you think that Poe could have been suffering from delirium tremens? And we just happened to have a letter from Sartain answering one of those queries. And here's what it says from April 7th, 1895. In reply to your inquiry as to whether Poe was suffering from delirium tremens on the occasion referred to, I should say not, if I understand or write the appearances of that disease. He was measured and deliberate in all he said, but that he was in a delirium was evident, because after a couple of days he acknowledged that he found what I had said in the beginning was true, that all he had feared was a creation of his fancy. And if you want more information, Sartain says, the only correct account of that sad episode is to be found in Lippincott's magazine of more than a year ago, written by me, more to rectify an error than anything else. So this is Sartain's idea. He's saying this isn't delirium tremens, at least as far as he's concerned, although Sartain's not a doctor, so we do have to take that with a grain of salt. But it does seem like a coincidence that three months later, once again, Poe wants to disguise himself, or maybe he's been cooped, or maybe he deliberately changed his clothes so people wouldn't recognize him. Also, once again, Poe is hallucinating. When he's in the hospital, he's having visions. He's talking to shadows. Just like with Sartain here, he's seeing things that aren't really there. So could there be a common cause? Could it be mania apatu, as Poe thought? Could it be delirium tremens? Or is there another explanation? Well, Matthew Pearl, who's the author of the Poe Shadow back there, proposed another hypothesis altogether. His idea was that maybe Poe had a brain tumor. Maybe that was causing all this. The problem is we really can't test his hypothesis. Poe's long been buried. There's not a whole lot left of him, even if we were able to digging back up, we probably wouldn't find much to test. But he was dug up. In 1875, he was dug up and moved.
from his original location to a new location. As you're moving him, the coffin fell apart. And you'll never guess where there's a big old chunk of Poe's original coffin you can see right here at the Poe Museum. Anyway, they're moving them, and the section of the cemetery says that you know Poe's skull fell off, so he picked up the skull, and he did what anybody would do if they picked up somebody's skull. He started shaking it around for some reason, and he heard something rattling her inside of the skull, and he said, oh, it's probably just a clot of dirt or something. And he put it back to the rest of the Poe pieces, and they put the Poe back together, put him in a new Poe box. But Matthew Pearl here, he thinks... It's possible, since the brain would have liquefied by then, there wouldn't have been anything left of the brain in Poe's skull, that this could be a calcified brain tumor that was bouncing around inside of there. So, it's another possibility. Once again, Poe's back in the ground. There's no way we can get to him to test this. And if we did get down there, there probably wouldn't be enough left of him to test. Probably wouldn't be anything left of the brain tumor if there was one down there. But that's just another theory about how Poe might have died and how it connects back to that strange episode he had in Philadelphia just three months earlier. So thanks to Levi for the comment and if you guys think you have an explanation for how Poe might have died or how this strange episode in Philadelphia can connect to Poe's death three months later in Baltimore, let us know down in the comments. And if you'd like to help the Poe Museum preserve precious Poe pieces like John Thompson's lecture about Poe or John Sartain's letter about Poe's strange hallucinations, why not support the Poe Museum? Become a patron or become a member. Just visit poemuseum.org for more information. And until next time, thanks for joining us. And I'll leave you with more gratuitous footage of the Poe Museum cats doing Poe Museum cat stuff.